I don't wish that on the Phoenixes or the or the Las Vegases of the world, but it's a reality that we've been living in. When you talk about this redistributing water, uh, it's not an easy concept because you're dealing with people's livelihoods. The thing about the Colorado River for us, it is our only water source. So we can't run out of water. We may not think much about the Colorado River here in Northern California. It doesn't really impact us, but it brings water to millions and millions of people across the Southwest United States. It may be the most important river in the United States. You can make the case. It's certainly the most important river for the Southwest. The problem is it's drying up. The river right now is in crisis. It's overtapped. It's overused. And we've been in some form of drought. In fact, if you look at the last 20, 30 years as a whole, it's been an incredibly severe drought. And this is all impacting the river, which will have ramifications for millions and millions of people, including here in California and us here in Northern California. We'll get to that. First, we're going to talk right now about the state of the California drought, and it's unchanged since last week. So still 15% of the state is in that abnormally dry category. The moderate drought, about 52% of the state. Again, this map is unchanged. When we look at the Colorado River Basin as a whole in the seven basin states, that's Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, and California. When we look at these as a whole, all of these either feed into the Colorado or take water out of the Colorado River, which is this blue squiggly line here. It originates high in the Rockies and actually pushes all the way through the southwest and then out into the Gulf of California in Mexico. As it stands right now, about 40% of the basin is not in any drought, but for the most part, that is up in Wyoming, the Rockies of Wyoming and Colorado. Uh, abnormally dry, that yellow color is about 13% of the state. The moderate drought, 27% uh, of the basin states. So you can see drought is a factor, and especially when you get into the drier states, such as Utah and uh, Nevada, are in quite a severe drought right now. It's a problem. Because when they're in drought, they're pulling more water off of the river, there's less going into the river, and they're relying more heavily on it. But the river as a whole has had a lot of issues, and the basin as a whole has, over the last 20 years. But certainly over the last two years, as we take a look at the map, from just two years ago, February 2021, this is what the basin looked like. 51% of the Colorado River Basin was in that highest level exceptional drought category. Last year, uh, last February, 1% of the basin was in the highest level, but still all of it was in some form of drought. And that's the problem is this has been ongoing, certainly for the last 20 years, is this mega drought across the southwestern United States. When we take a look at Lake Mead in southern Nevada, this is the lake that the Hoover Dam has created. When you take a look at the lake levels, they've been dropping quite significantly since the year 2000. This is what it looked like in 2000. And basically every year since, it's been trending downwards as of June 2022. This is what the graph looked like. This is a big deal. Lake Mead is a huge lake, and it really is kind of that transfer between the upper basin states where the water comes from and the lower basin states where the water really needs to go for a lot of reasons for both drinking, living, and agriculture. To give you an idea of just how big Lake Mead is, if Lake Shasta is represented by this orange circle here at four and a half million acre feet, this is what Lake Mead looks like. It would be represented by this blue circle at almost 29 million acre feet. So if you wanted to fill Lake Mead with Lake Shastas, you'd have to have about six and a half full Lake Shastas in order to fill one Lake Mead in Southern Nevada. This is a huge, huge lake that has unfortunately been drying up. Here's what it looked like on satellite from the year 2000. Here's what it looked like last year. You can see just how much water uh, has gone from Lake Mead, how low it is getting. I mean, we all heard the stories last year as well of bodies being found in Lake Mead in areas that have not seen dry, have not, have, have not been dry since the lake was originally filled in the 30s. Yeah, it's a problem right now. And this is leading many to talk more about conservation of water. But here's the deal. Water is used for a lot of different things, and there's a lot of different rights to water from the Colorado. California has the most senior rights. We'll hear from the experts in a little bit, breaking all that down. Uh, but California uses water, not just from the Colorado, but uses water 
for a lot of different things. And the biggest thing that California as a state uses water for is agriculture. 77% of water in the state of California is used for agriculture. The other 23% used for various other things, such as outdoor residential use, indoor residential use, that's 6% of California's water budget, commercial and industrial, environmental, that would be water releases for fish, lakes for fish, things like that, large landscapes, golf courses, that's about 2%. And then there's the remaining 1% of things, other things that water is used for. But by far, agriculture is the most used thing for water. We grow a lot of food here in California, not just for the nation, but for the world as a whole. So for, if we had 10 gallons of water, right, 10 gallons of water, eight of those would go to agriculture and only two gallons for everything else in the state. Everything else in the state is only two gallons, whereas agriculture would take eight of them. That is a lot of water used to agriculture. Some would say rightfully so. Some would say it's too much. I'm not here to say whether that one way or the other. I'm just here to sell you. That's what our water looks like in the state of California. So keep that in mind as we now watch this piece on the Colorado River. And we talk about ag water use versus urban water use, conservation, uh, which states are conserving the best. This is a huge problem that cannot be solved by one state alone, it has to be solved by all of the Colorado River Basin states. And we have to act quickly because the river is in bad shape right now. And it's only going to get worse as we go deeper into the 21st century. The Colorado River is in crisis. The river, which originates high in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado and Wyoming, has, for thousands of years, wound its way from the Rockies to the Gulf of California and Mexico, all while scouring the landscape in a way only the power of water can. From the ancestral Puebloans to the modern day, the Colorado has served as a source of life for people living in otherwise inhospitable places. It provides water for the most arid corners of the southwestern United States, including Las Vegas, Phoenix, Los Angeles, San Diego, and the numerous farms that pepper the landscape in between. Yet the pressures of modern day life and climate change have resulted in an over accounted for, over tapped and overused Colorado River. How do you manage that knowing that in the coming years, the amount of water on that system may actually be less than the contracts and the investments that were made assumed uh, from that system years ago? I don't think that it's good for a state like California, major economic in engine for the nation and the world, um, uh, to have a situation where any major part of it is so stressed from a water supply perspective. We have people who have built a community and built uh, a livelihood. And a lot of people that work here in this community. So when you talk about this redistributable water, uh, it's not an easy concept because you're dealing with people's livelihoods. Or you're dealing with people's uh, home. The thing about the Colorado River for us, it is our only water source. So we can't run out of water. Lake Mead in Southern Nevada, which the Colorado River fills, is running dangerously low. If Lake Mead falls too much further, it'll hit Deadpool status, which means water cannot reach the drains to continue to flow south into Arizona, California, and Mexico. To prevent this and keep the Colorado flowing, the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation has asked the Colorado River Basin states, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, Nevada, New Mexico, Arizona, and California, to cut back their water usage by a total of two to four million acre feet. That's about a quarter of the water currently allocated to the seven basin states. It's no easy task. Robert works for the Imperial Irrigation District in far Southern California. 97% of their water comes from the Colorado. Ag is the backbone of our economy here. The Imperial Valley grows a good, you know, 75% of the nation's winter vegetable crop, you know, and the things that we grow are, uh, we basically grow food for the nation. So if we, if, Farming gets cut back, you know, and that could turn into higher prices, um, or, or reduce supply, things like that. Farms in the Imperial Irrigation District grow all sorts of goods, from alfalfa for livestock to lettuce for wintertime salads. Any loss of Colorado River water would impact this, but a total loss would be even more devastating. 
Some people do criticize us for, for alfalfa growing, but you know, you know what alfalfa does? That's your steak. That goes to livestock. That's your ice cream and, and, and milk and dairy products and, and things like that. We have a uh, consumptive use right at 3.1 million acre feet. That doesn't mean we get the whole thing, but about 2.6 million actually comes into the valley for use. Imperial's right to water is a big part of this story. It's all part of a network of agreements that dates back over 100 years. So um, in general, what we have is what's called the uh, Law of the River. And that's based on the 1922 uh, 22, uh, Colorado River Compact. So basically the Law of the River works in a way that water uh, is allocated to the seven states along the Colorado River in the upper basin, that's Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah, in the lower basin, California, Nevada, and Arizona. And then under a treaty from 1944, Mexico gets water from the river as well. Put simply, the law of the river is an agreement between the seven Colorado Basin states and Mexico governing how much water each state gets. California, by virtue of being by far the largest and most populous state in 1922, has the most senior water rights. Arizona has junior rights, thanks to a 1968 agreement between the two states. The priority system creates a potential outcome, arguably where Central Arizona Project could go to zero, while California is still getting their whole 4.4 million acre feet. And again, there's legal interpretations. You could argue or not that that was the deal in 1968, but that's a pretty harsh outcome. And that's the crux of today's Colorado River negotiations. Arizona has to make more significant water cutbacks before California. And then a handful of Phoenix area cities uh, are losing some water as well in 2023. If this continues, uh, there'll be more loss of water within the Central Arizona project for tribes and cities. Uh, but depending on how deep these cuts get, you can start to see reductions uh, along the river in the Yuma area. Just across the Colorado River from Imperial County, California, lies Yuma County, Arizona. What's grown in Imperial is often packaged and shipped in Yuma, but Yuma is itself another large producer of winter vegetables in the United States. 3,000 acres of lettuce, we'll do uh, 15, 17,000 acres of other crops, such as broccoli, cauliflower, cantaloupe, spinach, kale, and then we'll do about uh, 5,000 uh, acres of melons. So those are our produce crops. In our district, we do right around a billion dollars. Like Imperial, agriculture is everything in Yuma. Also like Imperial, agriculture in the desert is impossible without the Colorado. The Welton Mohawk Irrigation and Drainage District knows this very well. So, uh, the last time the system went through this, we in the development of the 2007 guidelines. In, uh, in California, the quantification settled the things. Those efforts took years. They took a decade, literally from 1997 to, to uh, when the guidelines were, were finally settled in 2007. 10 years of hard negotiation. Uh, we were not given 10 years uh, to do essentially what was four times what those agreements did. Though so you're talking of cutting uh, two to four million acre feet, uh, you know, that's half the water use in the lower basin, including Mexico. Combined, Imperial and Yuma grow a large portion of wintertime produce for the United States. Cutbacks are hard, even with conservation efforts that are already underway. Yet the problem runs beyond just agriculture. Um, the Metropolitan Water District was actually brought into being to build an aqueduct system that, that we now call the Colorado River Aqueduct that would bring water from the Colorado River into uh, Southern California. If you've ever spent any time in Los Angeles, Riverside, San Diego, or really anywhere in Southern California, you've likely used, in some fashion, water from the Colorado. We operate a major system to deliver water throughout Southern California from these different sources. Um, where we sit right now, we're the, actually the largest treated drinking water provider in the United States. And the Colorado River, is a major piece of that. Um, 
you know, depending on the year, it can uh, range. Uh, uh, so around 25% of the supply that is used here in Southern California, some, some years higher, some years lower. Uh, and what we've seen over the last few decades is that system has been under stress. It's a system that depends not only on the Colorado. The State Water Project and the Central Valley Project all work to move water from the rural areas of the state to the population and agricultural centers elsewhere in California. So um, it's why an agency like Metropolitan cares about uh, some of the communities that are in the Central Valley that don't have access to, to clean, reliable water and wanting to work with them to, to, to develop that access. So um, we very much feel that we're all interlinked. And because of that, when you're seeing um, significant new storms coming up uh, and you're seeing snowpack in the Sierras, um, it is important that we manage that and are able to provide for sustainable water supplies going forward. It isn't just a Southern California, Central or Northern California issue. We all have a vested interest in this. Less water flowing down the Colorado into California would mean Metropolitan has to pull additional water from Northern California. This would put new stress on upstate reservoirs like Shasta and Oroville, while making the state more dependent on Sierra snowpack and valley rainfall. Since much of Southern California has already been living with the lowest amount of acceptable water, known as human health and safety levels, there isn't a whole lot more to cut back. The conversation for many is conservation. It's, it's money that we're putting into this to, to make these changes. High efficiency clothes washers, uh, uh, high efficiency toilets, um, rain barrels, uh, with the, the storms that we've had, uh, allowing people to install rain barrels and they get money to install those rain barrels. Metro also offers rebates to help people replace non-functional grass lawns with drought-tolerant landscapes. But since over 70% of California's water use is in agriculture, any discussions of cutbacks in conservation must include agricultural users as well as urban. 20 years ago, we signed on to what's called the uh, Quantification Settlement Agreement, and that is the largest ag to urban water transfer agreement in the United States history. Basically, um, we are able to conserve water um, in our system and on farm in exchange for uh, funding, and that water goes to Southern California. So if you ask me today, how much are we doing? Well, we're doing about 500,000 acre feet a year already, okay? And our farmers are heavily involved. And so um, the, the question is, what, what more can we do? So in Arizona, we are actually the leaders of conservation, in my opinion, because we formally, from the state level, state government level down, have had mandatory conservation requirements in our state since the 1980 Groundwater Management Act was passed. I think where we are light years ahead of California, honestly, is in the agricultural efficiency. In the Yuma area, their efficiencies are, are very high. 80 to 85 percent, which has helped them grow more produce with less water and help create a situation where the primary vegetable market at the time is coming from Yuma. In recent negotiations, two differing proposals on how to manage the Colorado going forward were put forth. One plan was the work of six of the basin states. It calls for California to bear the bulk of the cuts, 42 percent less water than what the state gets now. That's compared to Arizona and Nevada, which would have 37% and 2% reductions, respectively. The states argue that since California uses the most water, it's only fair that they cut the most. Not surprisingly, California submitted their own plan. California's proposal would have the state taking 9% less water starting this year, while Arizona would cut back 20% and Nevada 13%. California's proposal also introduces gradual reductions, while the multi-state proposal calls for steep cuts up front. Part of the proposal that California submitted to the federal government in thinking about the way they would manage the Colorado River, that they should also be considering, if things get really bad on the river, that they should be considering how to manage human health and safety deliveries off of the river system, similar to what we've been doing here in Southern California. 
And I don't wish that on the Phoenixes or the or the Las Vegases of the world, but it's a reality that we've been living in. Quite frankly, uh, Arizona can talk about what Arizona has done in the past to conserve water. California can talk about what California has done in the past to conserve water. Nevada uh, can talk about that. The fact of the matter is, the system, the reservoirs don't care about history. They care about today and this year's snowpack. Uh, and so what any of us have done can claim in the past uh, is really to me neither, neither here nor there. It's what we're going to do going forward in the Jeep. There's, there's more to, to the West than just ag versus urban, but I think that's basically at the end of the day what it's going to get down to. This is not something that can be done with the stroke of a pen. Uh, we're likely to end up in a lawsuit with any number of people for any number of reasons over this. Uh, before ever, before it's settled. And maybe that's, maybe that's why we have to go through the work through this. The problem is water cutbacks need to happen quickly. Water is not flowing like it once was, and there are millions and millions of people that directly and indirectly depend on the Colorado. Whether an agreement is reached between the states or in the courts, time is not on our side. The water is drying up. The Colorado River is in crisis.